good morning. Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Julio Garcia Navarro, and I am here to tell you a little bit about recent developments in the area of hydrogen transport in the Netherlands. First of all, a little bit from our organization, New Energy Coalition, the Green Gas and Hydrogen Division. New Energy Coalition is a cluster organization that includes many partners across the Netherlands, which are all interested in the energy transition. The Green Gas and Hydrogen team uh, we are a research and project development team. Uh, we are active in many local and many international projects, uh, mainly uh, in Europe, but also elsewhere. We are involved at different levels, for example, project coordination, project management, uh, as well as research, communication and dissemination, just to name a few of our activities. A few of our projects you can see on this small table, the, the first hydrogen valley in Europe, the, heaven, uh, the, the project called Heaven, uh, that's a, a project that, uh, that we uh, developed uh, from uh, all the way from the start. Uh, also regarding uh, smart energy islands, uh, smart cities, uh, carbon capture and storage with a consensus project, and a little bit about the High Delta project, which is something that I will tell you in a few minutes about. So to start, what are the opportunities of hydrogen economy in the Netherlands? Well, hydrogen, uh, I believe, is a, is a fantastic zero emission energy carrier. Uh, I believe some of you might also think that um, it, first of all, can be can be produced using 100% renewable energy, so that we can have a, a zero emission fuel. Uh, we can also use it to decarbonize industry, to decarbonize uh, the built environment, as well as to cut down the emissions from the transport and the mobility sectors. You can see on this image called the future Dutch hydrogen economy, where we see uh, that there will be many users of hydrogen many producers of hydrogen, and they are all connected through a hydrogen transport and distribution network. This is uh, what we believe a key enabler towards unlocking the hydrogen economy. In 2022, the Highway 27 project was approved by the Dutch Parliament, which uh, allowed the allocation for, of 750 million euros for the construction of a Dutch hydrogen backbone. It is expected that by 2030, 15 gigawatt of hydrogen transport capacity which is roughly equivalent uh, to 4 million, uh, million tons of hydrogen per year, will be, will be operational. And as you can see, the, one of the main reasons for this development is uh, the planned phase down of the, of the local Dutch natural gas uh, extraction and, and, uh, and transport. Um, you can see uh, on the third figure how it is expected to have the Dutch hydrogen backbone by 2030. And then in the fourth picture, you can see how this will be part of a, of a planned European hydrogen backbone. This will be one of the critical uh, uh, connection points to connect to the UK, to connect to Norway, um, and all, all to, to have a, a large continental network of hydrogen transport. But it is not just about the backbone. Um, we have projects in the Netherlands, one in particular about storage in this location called South Bending in the Northeastern Netherlands. This is a site that right now is being used to, uh, to store natural gas based on salt caverns. And in the future, it is planned that in this same site, there is a development of hydrogen salt caverns. This is uh, within the framework of the project called Highstock. And the timeline of this project is that by 2027, the first hydrogen cavern will be ready the, with, a, with a storage capacity of 6,000 tons of hydrogen and that by uh, 2030, so three years later, there will be three more for a total of four salt caverns in a, in a, uh, in a complete capacity of 24,000 tons of hydrogen. Like I said, this is not only about the backbone, so about consumption. Uh, you can see here this small town called Hochefein. This is a small, uh, a small town, a small municipality that happened to be very close to the, to the physical location of the Dutch hydrogen backbone. So it made sense that this town and several other towns in the country are also going to be pilot sites for hydrogen in the Dutch built environment. This is, this is spearheaded by the, by the Dutch uh, distribution system operators, and they have the objective to show the potential of hydrogen to replace natural gas in the built environment. Some of these cities have been, uh, have been using hydrogen in, in a few of their houses as early as 2019. There are a few projects that are starting this year, a few projects that will start in the coming years, and all in all to show that hydrogen is safe, the hydrogen can be used in the, in, in the built environment, 
and that there are definitely uh, opportunities to develop a hydrogen consumption market. So what are the present challenges when it comes to hydrogen in the Dutch gas grid? You can see here a picture on the left, uh, what I was mentioning uh, of the municipalities. Each dot on this map is a municipality. You can see that most of them are very close to the Dutch hydrogen backbone. This is one of the reasons they were selected. And the, the curious thing about these uh, pilots for the, for the Dutch build environment is that if we introduce hydrogen in the build environment, it means that the hydrogen distribution network, so the, the low pressure network, would also be, it will also need to be ready. So there will be a, hopefully a complete, a complete network from high pressure transport to low pressure transport that will enable not only, not only the built environment, but uh, will enable mobility, will enable, uh, will enable industry, both the large industry and the small scale industry. Uh, they all need to be decarbonized. And uh, this this will be one of the one of the ways to do so. So, what are the greatest challenges? The greatest challenges to successfully introduce hydrogen in the existing Dutch gas grid are related to social acceptance, to the development of cost-effective hydrogen value chains, to uh, the market creation via mandatory hydrogen consumption, safety of hydrogen, as well as compatibility of the grid components. So, I will dive a little bit deeper in the, the Dutch project High Delta. This is an overarching research program towards a hydrogen economy in the Netherlands. I will introduce uh, the High Delta One uh, Consortium. The High Delta Consortium was established in 2020 and is aimed at conducting research on the area of hydrogen transport using the existing natural gas infrastructure in the Netherlands. The focus of the High Delta One project was on the safety, uh, especially on the distribution network as well as the economic aspect. You can see here uh, a bit of how our consortium is formed and the three main topics, hydrogen safety, hydrogen in the gas grid, as well as value chain hydrogen at Nixon. This project uh, came to a close in April 20, uh, 2022, a few months ago. It started in December 2020, and we had a total research budget of 2.4 million euros between national subsidies and private contributions. This is the High Delta II project. The High Delta II project is, is a little bit more varied. It includes as well economic aspects of a hydrogen system looking not beyond 2030, but actually looking at, the, at how can we achieve that by 2030, there is the forecasted uh, energy, uh, hydrogen production and consumption. Uh, moreover, there is hydrogen safety in the gas grid. Now in the, in the high pressure grid, we, we have a research that is dedicated to the to the safety work instructions for the conversion of the high pressure um, the high the high pressure network to hydrogen. There is also the assets for hydrogen and transport, looking at uh, topics such as digitalization of the of the grid, as well as uh, plans to for a conversion, uh, bills of materials, etc. And we have introduced in High Delta too the social and environmental aspects of hydrogen, so that many many aspects can be. Uh, can be researched. We need to research all of these aspects. So we are we are making a start towards uh, towards knowing more on also the environmental and the social aspects. So the high delta two will be between May 22 and April 2023, also with a similar budget of 2.4 million euros. And so the high delta one project led to a total of 42 publications, 37 deliverables, four plenary presentations as well as one summary report that will be published in quarter three of 2022. Everything uh, that we produced, all the research is publicly available and can be found in highdelta.nl slash research minus program. So to finalize, so the research from the High Delta one and two projects and also the ones to come can be applied in international context. For example, the safety aspects of the hydrogen pipeline uh, transport and the use in the built environment uh, were based partly on results from the, from the UK which means that the results could be applied to other contexts, to, to other countries, as long as the, the local codes and standards are known. Moreover, about the compatibility, the, the compatibility of the transport assets are based on typical national layouts and safety work procedures, which means that they could also be applied to different countries. The techno-economic aspects are by nature international and the environmental and social aspects could also be extrapolated to an international context. And that is it.
Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me at j.garcia at newenergycoalition.org.